How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be putting a Volt 51 Volt 160 amp hour battery in a Club Car President. This is one of the nastiest things about having lead acid batteries is over time as the batteries age you get buildup of corrosion in places you didn't think could corrode. So these are the original J hooks on this President. They go down here and connect to the chassis to hold the lead acid down. Over time, that acid has spilled off and accumulated on various metals. One thing we've already done is stripped out the original lead acid charge receptacle from the cart. So that receptacle had three Phillips screws that held it in there. Uh, the main positive wire was bolted to the solenoid. And the negative wire for the receptacle is bolted to the negative on the controller. And there's also a blue wire, smaller blue wire that just gets unplugged from the wiring harness. Remove that, uh, toss out your receptacle, you're not gonna need it again. The bolt has an AC receptacle that we'll be installing. When doing these conversions, be mindful of any accessories the cart might have. This one has a USB port that is 12 volt operated. So it has a main positive and negative. Those are gonna go to the new bolt voltage reducer. There's also a light kit. So you'll be attaching your light kits positive and negative. Next thing we're going to do is install the charger receptacle port. Using the three supplied screws and screwing it into the old receptacle housing. That's what you should be looking like right there. Optionally you can add this plate to the charge receptacle cover and then screw the receptacle into that. Or you can just do it like this. So in order for the 160 to fit in this limited space here, we find it usually easier to remove some of the plastic in the way holding up this harness. So we'll be cutting that down pretty low, probably cutting out a little bit of this as well. That way the harness can run right here in this channel. And then we'll probably cut out a little bit of plastic there. That way it's not having to go over the plastic lip right here. So we'll cut that out. We'll also be shaving down this plastic area. What we want to do is with the mounting plates that come with the battery, we kind of want to match up with this level of the plastic here. That's about how tall the mounting plates are, which will be in this area. And to file all this down and make it easy, just make sure your wires are out of the way and you're not going to nick any of those. And our weapon of choice is the oscillator. very easy work of shaving plastics down. Obviously I'm very efficient with a cutting tool. This is not my first time at the rodeo, so we'll just move some of these wires out of the way. Be absolutely sure that you're not going to nick any wires in this harness. So I've got some shims back there to keep the wires out of the way. And we're just gonna channel this down so this main harness can relax and flow underneath the battery. This cart has an additional wire, not factory, that runs to the upper roof mounted brake light and it's kind of tight so I'm going to add an extension that way it'll lay nice and flat along with the rest of the wires that we have down below. Don't settle for the cheap plastic butt connectors. Go the extra mile and get these heat shrinkable ones. And in my opinion this is the best investment if you're going to be doing any type of wiring on your golf cart. And honestly I don't think I can be your friend if you don't use these. Alright, now our battery box area is ready for that 160 to squeeze in there. You see that the oscillator has made short work of my enemy. Our wires, our accessories for the USB ports are running along here. We'll probably wrap those in some loom as well. Make sure they're out of the way. And everything's nice and flat. Low profile. 
Okay, being as this cart has a rinky-dink little itty-bitty micro solenoid, we're gonna go ahead and replace that with the bolt solenoid, which is a way better solenoid. And we're gonna go ahead and replace the main positive cable and the main negative cable. All right, when removing and replacing this solenoid, uh, remove this cable, this pink wire right here from your red main positive. This is your main harness's power supply right here. So it powers your whole harness up. This will need to be cut, snipped, and replaced with a ring terminal uh, that the bolt package also provides. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can uh, drill some new holes here and here. There's an existing hole here, which I'm gonna make use of. And you can put a nut and a bolt through that. That would be the correct way. Uh, but another way, which is not wrong, is we're gonna use this stainless steel self-tapping screw. Make use of our existing hole there and make a new hole there. That should work out pretty well. Uh, when you're orienting the solenoid, I've noticed the positive wire tends to be in the way, so don't move it over here. Keep it over here in this area. And that'll help add a little clearance for your positive cable that needs to come in this area and clear this plastic frame. Whichever way you decide to do it, just make sure it is locked down. Work. A few moments later. Welcome back to the program. Now, there's been a lot going on, so I'm going to try to run it down as simple as I can. We've got our solenoid installed. We've had to add some smaller ring terminals to our solenoid to fit the solenoid little post. We've added the included big ring terminal for our main harness supply to the main positive. We've added the bolt cables. Pay attention to this red one because uh, it will have a larger eyelet on one end of it for the solenoid. The other side we've had to put in some vice grips and ream out the terminal so it will fit the extra large lug of the solenoid. And let's see, pay attention to my orientation here of the wires because I've got it where the ring terminal for the main positive isn't wedged in between what is going to likely be the negative wire for the solenoid. So we got it isolated and away from that solenoid negative wire. <clears throat> and it looks really, really nice and clean there. Uh, we've replaced the negative cable over there. It has the same size eyelets on either end, so not much to worry about. Let's run through its factory location, and we are all set back here. Put this back in its place and move on to the next step. All right, so this is what you should be looking at so far. See, we got ample room to put in that big battery. We've got a cardboard template to kind of give us a rough idea. When you pull out your battery from the case, set it on some cardboard and make you a template kind of like this. So give you a rough idea of where your uh, mounting brackets will need to be positioned inside here. All right, so John has already run our key switch enable for the reducer from the key switch blue wire back to the reducer. Extended a few of our accessory wires for the USB port and a light harness. Charger is mounted here, reducer is mounted there. Using our two inch hole saw bit, we've got the bolt gauge mounted into the dash right here. Pigtail hanging down below, ready to connect to the harness. Next step. All right, mounting brackets are added using our little cardboard template there. Everything's out of the way. Ready to drop in the big boy. All right, so our main mounting brackets down here. We secure those with a pretty thick self-drilling screw. And make sure you're making contact with the main aluminum chassis and going through it. If you do so, then uh, this bracket is gonna be most secure. After that, we mounted our bolts for the battery to the bracket. 
and John is very carefully working on the last two in that tight oh, corner. 